Look at that. I didn't use a single tool to get it on. Hey, what's up, Duff here. Welcome back. Welcome back to, this is not deja vu. You are seeing my master once again in the table, my master once again taken apart, my master once again with no tire on the rim. Uh, the reason for that is here is the Kenda tire that I was trying to fit. This, this was the tire that I uh, received a couple years ago from a Sherman S that I never used. It was just sitting in storage for that period of time. I figured I might as well use it, right? Free, great cost. Uh, put it on, and when I put it on, I discovered that I had a wobble. And I did all sorts of things to try to get it fixed. I, I massaged it, I, I reseated it, I overinflated it, I lubricated the sides and, and, and tried to ride on it to get it to, to sit straight, but it, it would have a very slight wobble. And it also, it almost felt like it had like a hump in it uh, when you were riding it, like a flat spot, kind of. So I'm, I'm riding, at this point, I got a lot of, of feedback from other people. Uh, tried every suggestion I got, uh, but at the same time, I also had people said that, hey, sometimes we just got bad tires and the tire was just effed and you couldn't do anything about it. So I'm writing this off to this tire just being effed. So I went and bought a Michelin Pilot Street 2, 809014, got it off Amazon. I think it was around uh, between 50 and 60 bucks uh, shipped to me. And I've used this tire before, uh, the, I think it was a 9090, I put on my Kingsong S22. So I'm gonna be putting this on the Master. This is well established as a high quality street tire. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put it on. I'm gonna use uh, the same technique as I did before where I insert the, the tube, zip tie it closed, and then mount the tire in that manner. So a lot of tires, they have the rotation uh, direction on the side of it, it tells you what way to mount the tire and that's that's always a good good guide to follow but another uh, guide that I've always followed is when you look at a tire you know how the tread kind of goes up you know the the tread markings go up usually you want the the tread to be going up as the tire is rolling so that kind of tells you the way it would the tire should be mounted even if you don't have arrows on the front of it so I will be mounting it in uh, this direction so, FYI. Uh, one other difference is I I went out since the last tire change and I bought some of this. It's called Bull Snot. I saw it. I don't remember what video I saw it on, but someone else um, was using this. It's it's a really good lubricant to get a tire on. Now, using this method, I don't think I even need it, but I, I have the stuff, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to take this uh, out in the garage and just spray the sides, so the sides should be super super slippery, which would make it even easier to get onto the wheel. So I'll be back. All right, I have the, the, the um, air valve through, do I, have, okay, do, okay. So the combination of the bull snot um, and the zip tie method should make this pretty darn simple. Like I'm, I'm just gonna use hand pressure as long as I can. Over. Look at that. I didn't use a single tool to get it on. That was all just hand pressure. Nice. Yeah, so bull snot does help for sure. No hand pressure or no, uh, no tools needed whatsoever. So uh, hopefully that means that there's no possibility that I punctured the tube. All right, so I'm going to cut the, cut the zip ties. Another, th another good thing about using a, a lubricant on the side of it is hopefully it allows the bead to, to sit down into the rim easier, you know, just kind of slide into, into place easier, at least in theory. So let me cut these with zip ties off and uh, good, we'll get to the next step. All right, the tire is back on, inflated. And at this point, I'm ready to reinstall it into the master. I'm not gonna cover the installation process because I did that on my last video. No need, no need to do that again, but we're gonna put it back together and I'm gonna show you the end result. All right, so you may remember when I got done putting the Kenda on, did the, um, did the spin test and I saw the, 
I immediately saw the bad wobble. So let's do the same lift test on the master with the Pilot Street 2 and see how it looks. It looks much better. <laughs> yep, much better. So that tells me that, uh, yeah, that street Kenda was just effed, basically. All right, so I'm gonna take this on a quick test ride, just to make sure it feels okay. And uh, then we're gonna move into mounting the Clark Pad race system. Two hours later. All right, I'm happy to report that the road test on the a uh, new tire was successful. It worked just fine. So now we're moving on to the next step of this process and that is installing the Clark pad system that was included with this wheel. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to replace the pedal as that should be very straightforward. I think it just uses the existing hardware. Just pop this stuff out, pop on right here's one of the pedals. See again, the, the accents, the, the color scheme that I went with was a gray and now the pedals will match that as well. So let me, um, let me get this one off and we will get going on the other one. When I, when I, <clears throat> when I took the old pedal off and, and compared it to the, the Clark pedal, there is definitely a difference in weight. There's a weight savings here. Uh, this weighed 2.1 2 pounds, this weighed 1.6 pounds. So these are lighter. Uh, they are a smaller profile, they're thinner. It's a thinner profile. Thinner but longer. You can see the Clark, pe uh, Clark pedal overlaid on top of the stock Bagood pedal. So should be interesting. Okay, let me get this done. All right, pedal one installed. Uh, super easy. I'm gonna flip it over to the other one. One thing I'm gonna do quickly is I'm going to remove the battery bolt for both packs that's on the inside closest to the pedal bracket. That is um, one of the mounting points for the new race pad system or Clark pad system. So I'm going to take these out while I have it on this side. And um, same deal up top as well. I need to remove uh, the two inside bolts up top. Just got the second pedal on, super easy. Very, very easy to do. Um, I wanna loosen that up a little bit, that feels a little tight to me. It's better. So now we move on to installing the uh, fairing kit itself. So in the video I watched that uh, Chris has on, on the ClarkPads.com site regarding this kit, I don't think he mentioned, or if he did, I missed it how these two bolts have to come out to put on the, the rear handle slash bumper. So, and then you have an, a, an empty hole that the third uh, piece of hardware will go in, but you do need to remove these two. Otherwise, there's no way to get it on. Now that I have those four screws out, I can slide in the bumper, which goes right there. Uh, there's, there's, um, There's bushings in here that keep it tight. Um, let's see how lucky I get lining that up. Okay, not bad, cool. Uh, Chris includes, he includes uh, Loctite as well. You can Loctite all these in if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to, I don't expect to be abusing my wheel that much that I'm not worried about it. And I can always uh, tighten it up a little bit if I need to, but he does include Loctite, Loctite if you would like to have that extra degree of security. I'm just trying to get one one installed on both sides. Oh, that one's not lined up either, shit, okay. I thought I had it. All right, let me get these lined up. You don't need to watch me futz around. Just a quick FYI, the, the bottom bolt here, he gives you two, uh, what size is this? And they're worn off. I've used my T-handle so much. Is this a four millimeter? I'm not sure, but it's a bigger, there's, there's two bolts that are, that are bigger. Uh, top ones are, are more narrow, so you need to use the thicker bolts in the bottom because the hole is bigger. Um, but yeah, it's on. Now, now that is super, super crash resistant from the back and gives you a great uh, lift point for lifting the wheel as well. Very durable. 
Next up is installing the actual uh, fairing kit itself. Chris mentions uh, some people may prefer to take a little blob of E6000 uh, adhesive and like put it in the middle of the battery case on each side to uh, give it a super, super strong connection. You know, like, like people that are legitimate racers, they, they would be torquing on the pads really hard. So I guess that could be something important for them. For me, uh, not so important. Not so important. Okay, so this fits, well, okay, fits really well. Chris did a really nice job engineering these. All right, so it's slapped on, and then basically you use the bolts that he gives you. Now, up, uh, up top, you just put the bolts in. In the bottom, you use these bushings because there's an offset here from the battery, so you use these bushings. Uh, you don't wanna, you don't wanna over tighten it, but you do need to use these bushings on the bottom, so let me get those in. All right, I have the fairing bolted in. While I'm on the side, I'm gonna put the bottom battery box protectors on. Uh, they just attach via Velcro. Now, Chris, again, he, in he includes some double-sided tape if you want to use some double-sided tape as well. Uh, again, I think with my installation, I will be fine. I will be fine just using the Velcro. Gives you uh, some nice protection on the corners of the battery boxes. All right, there you go. Everything is on. The, the fit and finish, it fits well, easy to install, and my wheel is protected. Now, I opted, when you buy this kit uh, uh, from Clark Pads, you have an option of what kind of pads that you want. You know, you could get his bio pads. You know, Chris has a bunch of different pads. I opted for, I think these are called the Titan uh, Foam Clark Pads. So I have them on there. We're going to have to see if, you know, how they, uh, how they fit where they're at right now. I might need to adjust them one way or the other, but uh, for now, I think that looks okay. And I think the wheel looks great, right? Oh my God, it's what a difference. Uh, turns an ordinary master into something much cooler looking, right? And uh, it has protection pretty much everywhere you can imagine at this point. You know, it really uh, protects the wheel. No, I'm not taking this wheel out to AVS or anything, but uh, if I was, this, this, uh, this would be a great kit to do it. So I wanted to take a second to thank Chris for uh, for the um, the wheel, I paid for it obviously, but I think it's a, it's a nice deal that's out there. I will put a link to I will put a link to the kit that I bought uh, in the video description below. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for something like this, you're you're into high speed riding, you want maximum protection for your Master V4. This is a pretty sweet way to go. I'm pleased with it. Now I do have another fairing kit. I have a fairing kit for my V13 that I have not installed yet. Um, that I don't think I'm going to do that this weekend, uh, but based on how easy this was, I don't think it'll be too tough to do it on the V13 either, but that, that'll be coming up. Can't do everything at once, right? So if you guys found this video interesting, please think about giving it a big thumbs up. Um, I'm very glad that the tire worked the first time without me screwing around with it. Um, feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. Keep seeing, keep seeing, seeing uh, streaks in the screen, I'm trying to polish them out. Yeah, feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. What did you think of the tire installation? What do you think of the Clark Pad racing system? And uh, anything else that you want to comment on for that matter. If you are not a subscriber, please think about subscribing. If you're going to subscribe, you hit the notify bell that's over there somewhere. So today is Saturday. I hope you have a great weekend. Oh, and also, just, just to mention quickly, if you weren't aware of this, Dawn has recently turned on membership on her channel. If you want to give Dawn... Uh, a little bit of love, you can uh, go over there and become a member on her channel. It's inexpensive and uh, would help her out. So uh, I'm trying to point as many people as I can that direction as possible. So yeah, think about doing that too. Dawn Champion on YouTube. Uh, that's all I have for now, guys. Hope you have a great weekend. There could be a couple more videos coming out this weekend. I have, I have shit to do, um, but who knows? That's all I got. Till next time, Tough Man out. And can I ramble on any more than that?